What's up? I'm Jonathan and welcome to Maker Tales, where I'm sharing my maker journey to help you go further in yours. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to never miss an opportunity to keep making. In this video, I want to show you how I made this jewelry bench for Jenny. Having never made one of these, I know nothing about them. So I've done a whole bunch of research to create a list of goals I want to achieve in the design. I want it to be cheap, so under £100 or $100, plenty of leg space, a metal catch, comfortable and sturdy to work on, and what made it a little bit more complicated was I wanted some built-in storage. With these in mind, I used the same frame structure as the basic workbench video, and they gave myself the challenge of adding some French cleat storage drawers to the side. After a little more research, I ended up on this design. I would like to say now that by no means does this design have everything a master jeweler needs, but it's a good start. It's not the simplest, but by far not the most complicated. With all that said, let's get straight into it. Materials wise, it's pretty simple. Some 2x4, 25mm MDF to make a really solid tabletop that is easy to replace, 12mm plywood with 20mm pine for the cleat storage drawers, as for the metal catch, some black canvas, and a few grommets and hooks. When it comes to the size of a jeweler's workbench, it really is different for each person. But what I'm aiming for here is that the working height is just under shoulder height to prevent slouching and posture fatigue. I'm also giving plenty of room for movement and shoulders in the curve of the workbench. All the dimensions of Jenny's workbench will be in the Maker Tales website link down in the description. But to get an idea of the size of the workbench, it's 87 centimeters high, 115 centimeters wide, and 75 centimeters deep. Now that all the wood is set and ready, it's time to put it together. I'm going to be using a pocket hole for the screws, as they are not long enough. Essentially, I'm going to be making a big hole so that I can screw more of the screw into the other bit of wood. Other things you may find useful is a speed square, to be able to keep the build as square as possible. Additionally, when making any workbench, it's best that it's done on a flat surface. This means you can use the floor as a guide for the tabletop, which will help keep things square. Now that the basic frame is put together, let's get this workbench top sorted. I don't know what this curve is called, but there are many ways I've seen jewelers add them to their workbench, from some simple circles to much more complicated ways. I'm going to be using a guide that I've created as I know I need a flat bit in the middle of the curve to make sure that the bench mate can sit center and securely. You can download and print this guide in the link below too. If you need it wider, you can extend the middle part of the curve. Once you have the guide, you have two options. You can stick the guide to the piece of wood and then cut it straight there, or you can add pencil to the line underneath the page to then transfer it faintly onto the material you're going to cut. I do it this way and then go over it with a pencil to make it a thicker and more visible line for when I'm cutting it. Now, before cutting the curve out, it's best to fix the tabletop to the frame. I'm going to simply screw it down with some slightly countersunk screws. This will enable me to fill in these countersinks with some wood filler that can easily be chipped out if I need to replace the tabletop in the future. Plus, it leaves the workbench looking pretty and clean, while still being very securely screwed down to the frame. 
The way that I put tabletops on a frame is I start on one corner, going down one edge and then 90 degrees on the other edge. Then I go to the opposite corner and pull it tight to pull the entire structure true, meaning that you will remove any wobble that might be in the frame. Once the tabletop is secure, it's time to cut along that curved line that you set before. I just went at it with a jigsaw and some sandpaper and it came out pretty nice. As I said, I'm filling these countersink holes with wood glue. I do this in two passes. The first one is to try and fill in as much of the deep part as possible. And then the second pass, I go just a little bit over to come back with the chisel and then a teeny tiny bit of sanding to leave a perfectly flat, clean finish. Technically speaking, at this point, you have a functional jewelry bench, which can definitely be more than enough for some, but Going that extra mile lets out of these drawers. I won't go into too much detail on how exactly to make these as they're just half a box with some pieces of wood either side. The key point here is the French cleat system because that improves the flexibility in the future if designs change. On top of that, the number one tip I would say with French cleats and using them as drawers is get the draw mechanism really smoothly sanded so it's a smooth operation. I decided to only add three drawers as I wanted to leave plenty of space for larger items under them. If you're going to be adding drawers to your own workbench, make sure you keep things square and always use pilot holes as you will split the wood if you don't, especially when working with such thin material and even more so with plywood. As for the finishing touches, I had no idea how to make a metal catch. After quite a bit of looking around, I saw a very blurry photo with this shape as a pattern for making one. With no guide, I got to work cutting out the canvas by eye. Lucky for you, if you also like this style of catch, I've added this into the link below as well. Once cut, it's a case of simply adding a hem, grommeting the corners, screwing some hooks underneath the workbench, and voila! a fully functional jewelry workbench. I have to say I'm really happy with the outcome. It is super sturdy and can take a real beating. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.